It was 10 p.m. I just got home from clubbing at NUS Toastmasters Club. <laughs> I was there clubbing and uh, I, when I got home, I saw my dad. He stood, stood there. His face was intense. He was trying to message someone. I thought he was supposed to be somewhere else, so I asked him, Pa, aren't you supposed to be at your girlfriend's house tonight? Why are you still here? He said, Vin, uh, over the past few days I've been making her quite angry. I've been making Jean quite angry. I, I don't know what to do. Pa, what happened? What do you do? Do you call her fat again? <laughs> uh, no, that was last time. <laughs> and then, she, she knew she's fat. So, she accepted that. But, this time she's angry because she called me fat. I wasn't angry, but she was angry because I didn't want to go to exercise with her. So, oh, okay. Hmm. From then on, they did not talk for the next few days. Do you, does this scene sound familiar to you? Not the father having a girlfriend scene. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's the scene of relationships having tensions. Does this actually seem familiar to you? Many times, we, we, we hear this in songs, not Lady Gaga, but Katy Perry. When you're hot, then you're cold, you're yes, then you're no, you're in, then you're out, up and you're down. Aren't relationships like that? And we all experience it. So I was wondering, hmm, my dad, this wonderful guy, his 40 years of experience of being in relationships, two that had failed, one was the first one was his marriage. Second one was also his marriage. And the third one, hmm, getting on well for five years right now. So I went I went asked him that night, hmm, what makes you be able to warm up your relationships again? Before they crash, of course. Warm them up again. So I asked him and he said, well, son, a few things. But just remember one thing. Win people over. You don't have to win your spouse over, but you have to win everyone except her over in order to help you win her over. What do I mean by this? You win her parents, you win her family, you win her friends, and you even win you, son. I win you over so you can help me win her over. How did this happen? So recall the incident, now she's angry, and that time it was during Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year, she was already very angry, but her parents invited me and my, my dad and I down to their house to have Chinese New Year lunch. So we went down there, we went there to, to have lunch out of respect for her parents. And I saw Jean walk in, and my dad was there laughing away with her parents, chatting away with her parents, while she was still grumpy during Chinese New Year. She didn't even say, happy Chinese New Year, ah sing, which was my dad. She just looked grumpy. She went there, she looked grumpy, my dad was still chatting up. So my dad just ignored her, but focused on her parents. He went there, and her dad was actually having a pain in her leg. My dad, being a nice, kind gentleman he was, went over, massaged him, and treated her dad. I, I was observing the situation. What happened? Was my dad focusing to help her or help her dad? She helped her dad and made her dad happy. But I was looking at Jean as well. Did she turn from grumpy? to smiling. And indeed she did. And during lunchtime, I saw my dad and her sat by together, he offering her dishes, and they started chatting up again, and she seemed to have brightened up during that Chinese New Year lunch. So I said, hmm, she was happy because my dad pleased her dad. And that was a wonderful feeling and a wonderful sight to see. And I realized that indeed, lesson number one, if you want to win your girlfriend over after you made her unhappy, win her parents over first. Well, next, who else does he have to win over? He had to win over me. And many times he used me in order to gain her trust back, gain her love back. How does this happen? You see, I am a third party in their relationship. Not exactly the kind you're thinking of. I was not having an affair with her. I must <laughs> clarify. I was not having an affair. I was a third party. I was a middleman. Whenever they had problems, they will go through me to communicate with each other. That's why I'm in Toastmasters, to learn how to communicate and help them communicate better. So, my dad would SMS her, if, well, SMS me to SMS her, in order to communicate something. Whereas she would SMS me to SMS him, 
if there was something to be communicated to him. For example, just two days ago, she SMSed me about something that my dad didn't do. Your dad has not been replying me for the past two days. Can you please ask your dad what time is our belly dancing show this Saturday? I want him to pick me up so that I, I can prepare faster. What's wrong with him? I'm really fed up. So, and then I, re I, my, I told my dad, my dad said, just reply her, I'll meet her at 7. I've been busy over the past two days, sorry I did not reply her. So I replied that. And then she said, okay, I'll meet him. Ask him to come earlier. How, how early, I asked. And she said, come earlier, about two hours earlier. I need two hours to beautify myself. So, <laughs> so she, she had, had that time to herself. And if you think about it, she had to go through me to communicate to her, him because he did not have the time. And I, I don't mind because I'm, I'm, I'm his son. I love him. And he has gained my trust over the years. So if you think about it, it's good that when you please your own son, your own brother, sister, or other people in your family to help you to appease your wife, your spouse, when you have problems. That is the magic of pleasing others, everyone else, except your spouse in order to please her. So what's the message for today? What's the moral of the story? What's from this experience? From my experience, in any future relationship of mine, or in any relationship of yours, Maybe you should think of an indirect approach instead of directly, oh, I'm sorry dear, I'm sorry for doing this. Maybe you please someone else in order to please them. You can coerce them, you can bribe them, you can persuade them. Use Project 9. Back to you, <laughs> contest chair.